Hello, this is our last video on ionic compounds and in this one we're going to look at the properties of ionic compounds, uh, the various properties that they have and the first one we're going to look at is the conduction of electricity by ionic compounds. Now they don't always conduct electricity, we will take uh, this example here, it's one we've been working with and the example is sodium chloride, mentioned a lot in the few last few videos but a very uh, useful example to use. Now when we have sodium chloride in its solid form it does not conduct electricity and we'll see the reason for that in a minute but there is something we can do to change the fact that it's in a solid form. So if we just move that out the way there, if we were to heat a suitable container and place our sodium chloride in there, that sodium chloride if heated strongly enough would melt. Okay, now let's have a look to see what happened when it melts. Here's our lattice structure for our sodium chloride, but if we provide enough energy, that energy would be enough to break the strong bonds that are holding the ions together, and the sodium chloride would melt. Now, when we do that, that means that the ions, whereas before they were unable to move, now they have separated, and not only have they separated, but they are also free to move as well. Remember they're in a liquid form, and if they're in a liquid form, they can move around. So if we were to add a couple of conductors, materials that can carry electricity, and we'll look at this in more detail in future videos when we do electrolysis, but that's just me showing a positive and a negative side of our electricity, possibly with a shown done with a battery. You'd see that the ions would move the negative to the positive side and the positive to the negative side. And what that does is allows a charge to flow between the two materials that can conduct electricity, between the red and the grey there. And that means a charge can flow, and if we were to connect those two conductors in a circuit, so here's a cell, here's a lamp, and we connected those two together. Actually, I think if you look at physics, the lamp is drawn slightly differently. I think it's a circle with a cross in it. That's the older way of drawing a lamp, but let's just uh, stick with it, remembering that there's a different way of drawing a lamp. If we were to set it up as we can see there, that lamp would actually light up because there's a charge flowing between those two conductors. So there we go, that lamp would light up because of the flow of electricity, because the ions are allowing the charge to flow between the conductors. And that would happen even though those two conductors are not physically touching or not physically connected to each other for the reasons we've just mentioned. We can also actually then explain that the ions are free to move and therefore they are able to carry a charge and a charge can flow between those conductors because of the movement of ions and we can get a flow of electricity. We can also explain that when the material is solid, when the ionic compound is solid, the ions are not free to move and therefore it does not conduct electricity. There we go. Now that's not the only way we can get the ions to move in an ionic compound. We can actually take our sodium chloride, which is actually common salt, dissolve it in water, and that would have the same effect of pulling apart the ions. So they would also be free to move if we dissolved the ionic compound in water. So we could just make a quick note of that. The ionic compounds can conduct electricity when dissolved. So it's not only when they're melted, but they can conduct electricity when they are dissolved as well. So in a similar way to what we did previously, we could uh, explain it like this. The ions are free to move and the charge can flow. So what we could do is just like last time, let's move that out of the way. Just like last time, we could put a conductor, a conducting material, could actually call that an electrode. But we could put a conducting, a conducting material, connect it to a cell and a lamp. And because of the flow of charge, between those two electrodes we would get the flow of electricity and therefore that lamp would light up even those two electric conductors or electrodes are not touching. Okay so we can now have an overview, a final overview of our ionic compounds. The first thing here is that ionic compounds have regular structures, giant lattice structures, in which there are strong electrostatic forces of attraction in all directions between oppositely charged ions. A lot of highlighting there but all very important points if you're answering exam questions to explain properties of ionic compounds. Here's our model, 
We know it's imperfect from our previous video, but it gives us a very good idea of how ionic compounds behave. The second thing is that ionic compounds have high melting points and high boiling points. And the reason for this is because we need a large amount of energy to break the many strong bonds between the ions. And again, a lot of that highlighted, but all very important key terminology and key words. And the last thing here is that when melted or dissolved in water, ionic com compounds can conduct electricity, can conduct electricity because the ions are free to move and so charge can flow. Each one of those is a separate marking point. So very important to, that you understand that. So you can pause here if you want to make a note of those points on the screen and just make sure you're able to write that out if you need to. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.